Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm gonna be sharing five tips to help improve your sports videography and things to look out for if you're working with an athlete and shooting their workouts. Uh, but before we get into that video, this past week I was interviewed by the Compound Gallery and spoke a little bit about the photography that I did during the Black Lives Matter protest. So I'll show you that after we roll the intro. Today is Friday, July 17th, 2020. This is my workstation, Monday to Friday. It's a little bit of a mess. Um, but I am being interviewed tonight by the Compound Gallery, which is an art gallery based in the Bronx, New York. It's owned by Seth Free, who's an amazing person, really involved in the art, music, sports scene um, in New York, but just across the country as well. Um, so I'm really excited to, to be doing that later tonight. They are, First of all, they created a virtual gallery of the gallery that's in the Bronx. So people are gonna be able to go in on their desktop and explore the gallery just on their own and at their own pace. And inside the gallery, seven black and Latino photographers, including myself, are being featured for our protest photography for our Black Lives Matter photos that we took over the, la over the course of the last two months. Um, so I'm really excited just to be able to participate and share a little bit about the message, share six of my photos, including the Kendrick Lamar photo, which just went crazy, as I've explained earlier. So it should be fun. I'm gonna film the interview on my camera as well, um, just to have a separate angle, but I'm excited to see how it goes, and let's cut to that now. Last question for you is, what's your favorite image out of, out of all the images that you have up there? It has to be the Kendrick photo, obviously. I think um, it, it just, it didn't, uh, you know an amazing job of just being able to spread the message you know people all around the world were messaging me you know from south africa from south america from all parts of europe i um, mean just reaching out and and you know thanking me for sharing those images just because it, it felt it allowed them to connect to what was happening here in america um and and just see what was happening so it has to be the kendrick photo but all of them you know hold a, a special place for me um because they were just all powerful moments on their own you know all right guys so just finished up that talk um well, well, you know, it's pretty quick. They have like seven photographers, I think. So I'm excited to see how the rest of the, the, the photographers go. I'm excited to sell the print um, for to donate some proceeds. Um, but yeah, it was a great experience. Just want to thank Set Free for taking the time to organize this and everyone that was involved. Amazing effort by the team. Um, and yeah, it's crazy because I've actually been to the compound gallery in the Bronx and it looks exactly the same. So the virtual gallery space is very spot on. Link in my description if you wanna check that out. So let's move on with the rest of this video. If you're looking to get into sports videography but don't have any experience or portfolio to show off to potential clients, please reach out to people and shoot for free. So the majority of these video examples are just connections that I made through Instagram from myself just putting myself out there, offering to come out and shoot a workout and just develop these relationships. And it's been extremely amazing and it's actually led me to other paid opportunities. So don't be afraid to shoot for free from time to time in order to build your portfolio, especially when you don't have any experience because it's a really great way to learn and an easy way to learn as well because you really can't mess up since you're doing it for free. All right, so starting with tip number one, show up early. I know I mentioned this in my tips for concert videography, but I can't stress enough how important it is to show up early. A professionalism you know you don't want to be that person that shows up late and people are waiting on you you want to be someone who's reliable and dependable additionally it gives you time to analyze the land you know if you're shooting on a football field a basketball court if you're shooting in a gym you want to check out the space and see where you'll be able to go you want to maybe have time to take a few establishing shots that you might throw in your edit because it'll be an empty space and you really have the time to just curate that and not have to worry because the workout's already happening and you won't have time to grab those establishing shots so tip number one please just show up early it'll really just be a lifesaver in the long run tip number two wear comfortable clothing and comfortable shoes so for me, I shoot a lot of football players on a football field or just like on a grassy plane. And you know that football players, they like to run a lot. They have a hundred yards of football fields to work with. So it's a lot just to be able to keep up. And if you're wearing like 
very uncomfortable shoes or jeans, or just like really tight jeans or whatever, like it's just not gonna be conducive for you as a videographer or photographer. So I recommend just wearing some nice running shoes, athletic shoes, maybe even some athletic shorts. This is where there's a little flexibility in your clothing, especially if you're not shooting like an event, for example, where you have to dress a little bit more formally. When shooting workouts, feel free to dress like the athlete dresses because in a way you are an athlete. You know, you're carrying this camera, all this camera equipment, you're running around trying to keep up with them. Um, so it's extremely important to be agile, fast on your feet, and you don't wanna be stuck in just some tight jeans where you can't even move. So tip number two, please wear comfortable shoes and comfortable clothing. It'll save you a lot of headaches, trust me. All right, moving on to tip number three, and this is where we get a little bit into the more technical and equipment side. Bring a long lens, and if you don't have a long lens, rent one. So whenever I'm shooting workouts or sporting events, I am always bringing at least a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I also bring my 24 to 70 millimeter lens because that's the one I own, but I always rent out an additional lens. And this will really be helpful for a couple of reasons. So A, you can't always be close to the action. So you also want, you want to give the athlete their space and not be right up in their face because you know, they're in high intensity movements. You can't always predict the direction that they're going in and you just want to stay out of the way and let them do their thing. So bringing the long lens allows you to be, you know, 50 to 75 feet away and you can just really zoom in and get your shots that you need while also staying out of their way. So it's an extremely pivotal to bring the long lens because it allows you to get different shots, different angles, and be far away from the action where you don't interfere, but close enough to get the shots that you need. Tip number four, and again, on the technical side, but don't be afraid to shoot in 24 frames per second. So with sports, it's really easy to fall in love with shooting in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second because granted the athletes are moving extremely quickly and it does add a level of uh, drama and intensity when you can slow that footage down and really show the micro movements of these athletes because they're just running so fast and they're cutting on a dime. But shooting at 24 frames per second can also be very key for your edit because it really makes the audience feel like they were there. It really adds a level of intensity that slow-mo doesn't because you really get to see how quickly these athletes are running, how quickly they're dropping on a dime. And if you're shooting at f2.8 with a shallow depth of field, it just really focuses in on that athlete, on their quick movements, and it really just adds to the whole edit. So please definitely shoot in 60 frames per second, get a few of those shots or the majority of your shots, I would say, but don't be afraid to switch it over to 24 frames per second because it just adds another dimension that most videographers don't take into account from what I've seen online. So try it out, let me know how it goes for you. And for tip number five to round us out, I kind of mentioned this in tip number three, but please, please, please don't get in the way of the athletes. I can't stress this enough. This workout is not about you. You're just there to capture it, to do your job while staying out of the way. So, you know, luckily I've never been called out to get out of someone's way. I've never run into an athlete in the middle of a run or whatever it may be. But if you do get in the way and you, for whatever reason, bump into the athlete, you know, some of these athletes are worth millions of dollars or they have whole careers ahead of them if you're shooting high school or college athletes. So you don't want to be that person that causes injury to this athlete while they're working out because you never know what kind of ramifications that might have. Um, so please, again, bring your long lens, you know, stay out of the way. For me, on my placement, if, for example, I'm shooting a football athlete, um, I shoot a lot of wide receivers, um, cornerbacks from time to time, but I'll sit right in front of the quarterback, maybe 10 to 15 feet in front of them because I know they're throwing it to them. Um, and that way I'm kind of still in the line of sight of where the football will land um, while still being out of the way. So remember to just either, you know, sit on the ground, be very low, um, get out of the way, or bring that long lens, how I told you in tip number three, and, you know, be towards the end of the field or on the sidelines where you know you won't get out of the way. So make sure you're listening to the coaches and hearing the instructions that they're giving the athletes because that'll give you a really good sense of where the athletes are gonna be going and moving during their workouts. At the same time, don't be afraid to just for the first rep that they do, just sit back, you don't have to shoot that, stand away and then see how the player movements are happening so that you have an understanding of, all right, so now this is what they're gonna do and this is where I can place myself and you can just shoot from there. So, you know, I think I highly recommend to just 
first take a step back, see what's happening, especially if you're not really into sports. Um, it may be difficult to understand what's happening. So, you know, just take a rep, see what happens, um, what the athletes are doing, and then take it from there. But again, stay out of the way. You don't want to cause injury to yourself or the athlete because that might be the end of your career. So pro tip. Alrighty, so those were my five tips to help improve your sports videography if you were shooting athlete workouts. I did want to give you a sixth and additional tip. We do live in a time of a pandemic, especially here in America where it is continuing to grow. So don't forget to bring your mask. I think that is a very key element, especially right now if you're going out, interacting with people, coming home, interacting with people that are close to you, family members, you don't want to be spreading the virus. So just please remember to wear a mask during all your shoots and be safe out there. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about it and are ready the next time that you are working with an athlete. I really appreciate you watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. Stay safe out there. I'll see you next week.